Good morning and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kiana. I'm also the Art of Phenology everywhere on social media and it is the week before Thanksgiving break and I'm so excited for this week. Um, not necessarily the teaching part even though I think this will be a great teaching week. I'm mostly excited because we get a whole week off next week and this is just kind of the countdown. Um, this is my first week in my classroom all by myself um, without a student teacher since the start of the school year so that's gonna be very interesting we'll see how that goes um, but it is nice to be able to vlog in the morning and just kind of vlog whenever I have free time and just kind of be like in the stillness by myself um, so happy Monday uh, today we have a lot of things planned uh, we're gonna be playing some trash ball and doing we're starting our weather unit in science um, so it's going to be a great day. I'm not going to be vlogging too much because my classroom is like an actual disaster. It looks like I walked into like a war zone. So I have to clean it up this morning. But I do want to show you guys my outfit before I get started with my day. I am wearing this sweater from Shop RBC. She's like a teacher boutique online and it is the comfiest cutest like softest sweater it is so cold today the low today in georgia is 31 uh, right now it's like 40 but it's still pretty cold especially for me so i'm wearing this really warm cozy sweater and i just have on some black denim actually i'm like should i front tuck it let's see yeah I'll front tuck I guess I have on some black denim and then I also have on my combo boots from old I mean from Target if you guys can see them they are memory foam so they're really comfy um, but that is how we're starting our day happy Monday it's gonna be a great day I plan to be checking in with you guys this afternoon this evening um, kind of like showing you guys my lessons I just kind of want to get back to showing why I started to share on social media and get back to like the basics of teaching and sharing my regular everyday teaching life so I'm excited to do that today see you guys later <laughs> It's actually pretty late it's five o'clock on this Monday uh, for the first hour after school I've just been tackling my to-do list like I always do if you've been following or subscribed to my channel for a while you know I come in I make a little to-do list for myself this is like my power list to help me get through the day and I haven't done too much on it I have drafted my fraction feast when I'm making TPT products I like to draft them like just on copy paper and then turn it into a product so I drafted that but all of my stuff is on my MacBook at home so I'm gonna have to go home and fix that I also um, had to like dig into my science curriculum because our science plans were a little bit on the simpler side and I wanted to make it a little bit more hands-on and just kind of pace it out 
I'm moving at like a different pace from the rest of my teammates. So I wanted to just kind of figure out how I wanted to go about it, look for some Nearpods, look for some activities to supplement the curriculum um, because we just don't have enough time to do the experiments that go along with it that my county has planned out, which are really good, but I just don't have the time or the materials to do all that. So I've done that and then I made this anchor chart. Let me show it to you for uh, weather versus climate. That's what we learned today in class. And so I like to always put something on the wall so the kids can focus on being independent. So this is what I made after school today. I made this super simple uh, half anchor chart that talks about the difference between climate and weather, and then some keywords that students can look for when they are having to determine if a situation is climate or weather. I also made this water cycle anchor chart last week. It is not the prettiest, but it does the job. It has our key terms on there and talks about all of the different stages of the water cycle uh, for my students and it provides a visual enough for them to be successful with it. And then these are some anchor charts I bought maybe like my second year of teaching. It was when I taught third grade, so I guess my third year of teaching. It was when I taught third grade, but fourth grade was bundled in it and now I can use these for fourth grade. So I'm gonna give you guys just a really quick walkthrough of what we did today. I told you that for science, we talked about weather versus climate. Tomorrow we'll be talking about weather instruments, but for math, we are taking a math test tomorrow for adding and subtracting fractions and mixed numbers. So we played trash ball and turned our study guide into a review game. So if you're unfamiliar, I feel like everybody's played this, but if you're unfamiliar, trash ball is like a super simple game. Um, all I do is take the review questions from the study guide and just put them on a PowerPoint and kind of mix up the order of the questions on the study guide. I split the students into two teams. They come up to the front. Whoever hits the desk first gets to answer first, um, and they get one point for every correct answer. Once they've gotten a correct answer, then they stand like opposite of the the small trash can in my classroom and then they try to shoot a piece of trash like just a crumpled up sheet of paper and get that into the trash for an additional point so students can get up to two points per question one for accuracy well I guess correct answer and then accuracy for making it into uh, the trash can so again it's really simple this is the small trash in my classroom and students just try to shoot that from about here it lines up with my uh, student journal so they stand here shoot it in the basket and then these are the team names that my afternoon class came up with kids are just so funny golden chicken and the lightning bears and uh, the golden chicken were the victors of today's game and here are my math slides from today. They were super simple, same I can statement and standards that we've been working on because it's a review day. And here are just some of the questions from the test. And then you can see that after we go through the game of trash ball and we've answered all the questions, I go back and model how to answer every single question. I don't have the neatest handwriting um, and we were moving pretty fast, but this is just what it is. So I just take the questions, just copy and paste them into this uh, slide and it's just as simple as that. Also the backgrounds for my slides are um, from Basic Life of Brooke. She, I believe that's her Instagram name and her business name, but she makes some really cute backgrounds and products. She's so creative and so I've been using them for my fall themed slides this week. And then our must do's and may do's for our small group centers. Um, that's what we were working on today. Speaking of math, these are some of the anchor charts that I made for my students for this whole unit. So we've been working on adding and subtracting fractions for about two weeks. So this one's just the basic adding fractions and I showed them how to do this with the bar model and on the number line. And then this one's a fraction over one whole. So again, bar model in the number line and then subtracting fractions, pretty simple, same strategies, and then subtracting fractions from a mixed number by just a fraction. And then we go into adding mixed numbers. So I showed all the, the different ways to do that. So with the visual model, the number line, um, adding with regrouping, and then the steps that go along with it. And then subtracting mixed numbers with the visual model. Um, do, 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 what was I gonna say? Oh, same thing. So with the visual model, with the number line, um, converting it into improper fractions and then teaching them how to borrow. And then here's the anchor chart I made for decomposing fractions. So that is that. I'm just breaking it up by the unit fraction and different ways that we can do that. And mixed numbers are a brand new concept for fourth graders. So making sure that my students understood what a mixed number was and how we can 
go from the unit fraction to a mixed number um, and then converting that to an improper fraction. And then also here is an anchor chart of just how to turn mixed numbers into improper fractions. So lots of anchor charts. But that's about all I have for today. Uh, today was a pretty simple day, pretty easy. Tomorrow's gonna be probably pretty simple and easy because they're taking an assessment. I do have a lot of work when I go home, so I'm not gonna be here too much longer. But that is how our Monday went. It was a good day and I'm looking forward to only four more days till Thanksgiving break. Hello, teacher friends. Happy Tuesday. I'm only gonna vlog for maybe two minutes because I am like really late and I gotta get up out of here. Um, but today was a really easy day, I guess you could say. My students took a math test um, on their adding and subtracting fractions. Went pretty well, but there's definitely something I'm gonna be reteaching tomorrow. Um, and in science, we did our weather instruments, so I made a quick flat book for my students to organize their thinking. So if you're a fourth grade teacher or you teach weather instruments, that's now a freebie in my TPT store. I can show you more about it tomorrow. I probably will show you more about it tomorrow. I just also updated my TPT product for a fraction feast to add adding fractions to it. So it's fourth grade friendly and fifth grade friendly. Again, I'll go into detail with about that tomorrow um but before i head out i just wanted to show you guys my outfit um actually let me show you in the mirror so lighting over here is always pretty terrible and the outfit is not super great but we get to wear um jeans all week long so i am wearing this like green army green vest thing that i got from Marshalls or TJ Maxx. This gray shirt from Old Navy years ago. Jeans from Old Navy. Shoes, probably Old Navy. We'll see. Yep, Old Navy shoes as well. Um, don't judge my toes. Getting my feet done. But that's what I wore today. And I will see you guys. Manya. Happy Wednesday! We are past the halfway mark, which is really, really great. Um, today was a pretty good day. We um, introduced equivalent fractions. That went okay. Um, I had an IEP meeting this morning, so my schedule, like my day started a little bit off. Um, so we just kind of played a game of catch up. We finished up those graphic organizers that I showed you yesterday with the weather tools and I have just been trying to like grade, 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 grade because grades are due on Friday. So I've been trying to get these math tests graded and input and other grades and all of those sorts of things. But pretty good day overall. Um, what else happened? Oh, I have to show you guys the fraction feast and an activity that we're doing. Um, it's gonna be so much fun and show you guys my outfit. So let me start by showing you my outfit. One day I'll be really good at like showing you how I look in the mirror, um, but I don't know if that day is today. So here is my outfit. I have on my math teacher earrings. Let's see if it'll focus for you guys. Nope. I have on my math earrings and then this dress from Target. I got it last year. It's like one of those just kind of soft t-shirt dresses and I'm wearing it with black leggings and my black combo boots from Target with just some random socks I found that don't really match, but I'm going with it. So today was a pretty simple day. We started equivalent fractions today. So let me show you how I introduced equivalent fractions to my students. So what we did was so, so simple. We started with a sheet of white paper. It was not folded, obviously. And then I had my students fold it in half like this and then fold that half in half and then fold that half in half like so. Then by the time we were, were done with that, you, the kids had eight equal size strips. I taught them how to carefully cut on the line so that all of the um, parts were straight and equal because I told them we would be using those for comparisons. So then we had these eight little strips like so. 
And then I had my students practice, uh, well not practice, we labeled the parts. So we determined that these are all the same size hole. So we had one hole, which we're not auto focusing. We had one hole. Then I changed that. Then we decided, well, what if we were to fold that in half? We would have two equal parts. And that would give us halves. Then if we folded that into thirds, like this, we'd have three equal parts of the same size hole. That would give us thirds, or three one-third pieces, which is not focusing. The most annoying thing ever is when you think you're recording and then you're not. Um, but this is how it ended up. We just partitioned until we had this many um, fractional pieces, and then we had the discussion that the larger the denominator gets, the smaller the fractional parts get. And we also talked about how we would prefer to have a half of a million dollars over a twelfth of a million dollars. Um, well, really, I said I'd like to have a whole million dollars, and they were just discussing how that's not fair. But we discussed that because these are all the same size whole, in order to get 12 pieces, it would have to get a lot smaller to share the same size compared to having to only share into two pieces. Um, and my kids had some background under background knowledge from third grade, so that really helped with that. And then afterwards, we just kind of took like a unit fraction, like one third and tried different things to see if they were equivalent. So we tried fourths, and we saw that it was not aligned to one-third, so that was not equivalent. And then we tried sixth, and we could see that one-third is perfectly lined up with one-sixth. That's why I told my students it's super important that you're folding as carefully and as accurately as possible. And then we tried eighths. Eighths don't work. And then we tried twelfths and the twelfths work as well. And then we kind of have the discussion that if one third is equivalent to two sixths and one third is equivalent to four twelfths, then that also means that two sixths and four twelfths are equivalent to one another. And we can see that because their lines line up like this. So we proceeded to do that for fourths and halves um, for those unit fractions and we listed those and I think it turned out pretty well. I think they seem to understand it pretty well. And tomorrow we're gonna be pulling out the fraction tiles and I think also introducing some number lines. So we'll see how that goes. But I got my fraction feast all together, but I think I'll share that with you tomorrow. I also am going to be doing an activity with my students from the Perfect Pencil and I wanna share that with you guys. Um, I say tomorrow, but tomorrow might be a busy day too. At some point I'll share it with you guys because I gotta get out of here, it's getting late trying to think of if there's anything else I need to share with you guys. Um, I didn't share too many details about the weather vanes and the weather instruments, but it's a freebie at my TPT store, and my kids really enjoyed the flat books. They said it reminded them of second grade, so that is what it is. Also random, but I got my nails done yesterday, and I tried to do, like, Thanksgiving nails, and my kids told me that they look like Reese's Pieces. So... That said, I'm going to head out of here. Hopefully I'll go home and make some reels to talk about my fraction feast. And I can share that with you guys later. But yeah, I hope you guys had. Well. So today is now Saturday, uh, two whole days since I last vlogged, maybe even three. Um, and that's just, well, I guess it's been two. And that's just been because it's been a whirlwind. So I left off with um, talking about getting ready for Fraction Feast and everything like that. And then when, I mean, Thursday, I couldn't really vlog after school because I was getting ready for date night. So I like quickly showed my outfit. I was wearing these like really cute Target um, sweatpants, like some white shoes, and um, I get your teach on jean jacket, and I think a black and white shirt. Um, then I made like a quick video to show you guys uh, what the tables look like for Fraction Feast, and I was going to, I had all intentions of going to work on Friday and doing Fraction, free, fraction Feast with my students, but Thursday night, something most incredible happened, and I I got engaged oh my gosh like I am still on cloud nine 
it is insane to believe it, but I got engaged Thursday night. So my date night was actually a surprise proposal. It was a rooftop proposal. It was perfect. My family and friends were there. It was really, really cold and windy and I was completely surprised. I did not expect it whatsoever, like whatsoever. Um, and it was great. But then later that night I got sick and then I remained sick the entire day on Friday, yesterday. So much so that I could not go to work. Like, I thought I was going to die. My mom had to come over and help take care of me. That's how sick I was. I was just so, so sick. So I couldn't make it to work, meaning I haven't even gotten to share this with my students. And we did not get to do Fraction Feast, unfortunately. Um, so we're going to just end up doing Fraction Feast when I get back to work after Thanksgiving break because now we're on Thanksgiving break. And tomorrow I head out with Dustin to Florida to spend the week with his family and share our engagement with them. Still so crazy to believe. But if you would like to watch our engagement video, I've actually linked that video in the description of this video if you want to check that out. Um, and yeah, I'll be happy to share more Fraction Feast things with you guys um, next week. But I will go ahead and embed some videos to at least show you guys like how it works. So if you still have school Monday or Tuesday of this week, then you'll be able to at least watch those videos and see if that's something that you would want in your classroom. My favorite part of Fraction Feast is that you can use real recipes that I just Google Thanksgiving recipes from the internet because they lend themselves really well to fractions and mixed numbers. So I allow them to pick whatever meal they're going to make, list the servings, and choose four of the ingredients and list the amount of each ingredient. So then for the fourth grade version, since we're just focusing on adding fractions with like denominators, they're going to list the ingredients and then the amount that they have of each, and they're going to find the sum of all of those ingredients and then write that here. And then on the back side or the second page, they're going to be taking those same ingredients from the front and writing an equation to double it. So it says another family RSVP'd and they need to double it. And then the same thing, write an equation and then tell the total when they triple it. So basically repeated addition, it also lends itself really well to multiplying fractions by a whole number, which we're not there yet, but that repeated addition should get them there. And then there's a challenge. The challenge is to prepare the recipe for the entire class. That's gonna be Definitely for my higher students um, that are seeking out a challenge because we are far from that level. We just <laughs> wrapped up adding and subtracting fractions with uh, like denominators. The fifth grade version is pretty similar, but this one's focused on multiplying fractions. So again, they have to list the four ingredients and tell the amounts. But for this one, they make some predictions first. So what would happen if they doubled the ingredients? So multiplying it by a whole number, multiplying it by two. And then what would happen if they halved the ingredients? So that would be multiplying it by one half, multiplying it by a fraction. And then on the back side, they go ahead and do that. So they take each ingredient, write the amount of the ingredient, multiply it by two, and then tell the total that they got. Um, and that's multiplying by a whole number. And then they multiply by a fraction, mixed numbers and whole numbers, multiply that by a fraction, write that equation, the amount that they got. And then they, then they have to tell whether the amount of each ingredient increased or decreased. They just circle it um, when they multiplied by a whole number, whole number versus when they multiplied by a fraction. And then they have the same challenge. In this one, my students have always had success. Then they have to tell whether the amount of each ingredient increased or decreased. They just circle it um, when they multiplied by a whole number, whole number versus when they multiplied by a fraction. And then they have the same challenge. In this one, my students have always had success um, with this one, but they're also more familiar with multiplying by a whole number. Uh, in my fourth graders, that's just that's totally out of their 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 realm right now. Thursday was also a lot of fun because we got to kickstart it with a competition. Um, unbeknownst to me, Thursday was the Red Cup Day, so I was a little bit late for our pumpkin decorating competition that we had at school with our staff because Starbucks lines were insane. But we did a pumpkin decorating competition and my team decided to do a turkey uh, or decorate our pumpkin as a turkey and also like set up a, like a Thanksgiving feast sort of setup thing and it was so much fun um, as soon as I walked in I just started fanning the brown paint on the pumpkin uh, so I have some footage of that but we won first place so we each got gift cards I chose a Starbucks gift card because coffee is my the way to my heart um, 
but that was so much fun. And then we went throughout the day and just kind of did the regular motions. And at the end of the day, we got ready for Fraction Feast. Hope you guys have a happy Thanksgiving and I will see you guys next time as a Beyonce. Bye.